Hi, yogis. Hi, friends. Working through some more Zoom things. Thanks for sticking with it. Welcome to the practice. I am surrounded by gourds. Last count, David counted about 130 something of these. I think next time you see me, I'm just going to be completely encompassed by them. So welcome to our gourd practice. Find your way in, nice and comfy, edge of a blanket. I have a really yummy practice today and tend to our spines. See if we can work some of the muscles around our hips. Seems to be a popular thing. So let's find our breath. Let's find our way in and enjoy our practice. Back to your safety zone. Back to your spot. Back to that place where nothing else matters. We take ourselves within with our breath and our kindness. Find yourself rooted. Sit bones, your anchors. Maybe today envision that long rope that's tethering you down to the core of the earth. It's holding you. And concurrently, there's a lift to the crown of your head right up to the sky. Finding that first awareness of the system today. Release the weight of your legs towards the earth. Rock up onto the sit bones and maybe a little bit forward of them. And feel your pelvis move into its interior tilted place. That's the position we're looking for for seated and standing postures. With the slight tilted forward pelvic bowl, the arch in the back appears. Maybe take your hand this morning or this afternoon into the small of your back and see that you've got a nice little curve. Take your hands to the bottom of the rib cage. Let's bind in those low ribs, Sudhyana Bandha, holding safe and secure that mobile segment so when you bring your chest tall, what's opening is your heart. Feel your blades release down your back, and the crown of the head reaching up to the sky. The same curve in your low back appears in your neck here. Maybe you can feel how some of the musculature in the neck and these upper traps softens. We can balance the weight of our head over our spinal curves and allow the muscles to release. Take your hands back behind you, find those big open arms. Take it back far enough that you start to feel some sensation across the chest, these pectorals opening down into the fingers. Let your elbows release to your hips, palms are up, receptivity down, grounding. Close your eyes and in your mind's eye, we can see the back of the skull aligned with our sacrums can feel your ancestral support behind you. Maybe envision somebody back there. Somebody's got your back. Feeling the chest opening, the heart chakra emanating the green light. Take a moment now and scan your internal architecture, what's happening for your body today. Maybe register any sensations or discomforts or maybe I'm feeling good. What's happening in the mind? Remember, it's not just our physical bodies we take care of in our practice, but our minds. Maybe you've got a racing mind. Maybe there's a lot of thoughts that you're trying to process. Maybe it's calm. We invite our breath now. Really see the breath today. In that breath, the prana, the life force, the oxygen as we take it in through the nose. Inhaling through the nose warms, hydrates, and purifies that air as we allow it in. Invitation only breath, our conscious breath. Inhaling through the nose, feel it as it comes deep down into the lungs. And at the depth of the lungs, we exchange the oxygen for carbon dioxide and all the exhaust blow it out through your pursed lips. If you blow out through the pursed lips, it slows down the exhalation. See if you can make those exhalations maybe twice as long as your inhalations. It's a potent stimuli for your brain, those long, slow, deep exhalations. 
to tell the rest of the system we're moving into relaxation. So again, practicing all over the world, this beautiful community of ours. See if you can find your own breath wherever you're sitting and perhaps we can unite our breath through this collective consciousness and awareness. Let's sit for a minute and see what we can find. Before you open your eyes, take your thumbs, cross them like bird wings, right over the heart center. Feel your heartbeat inside the chest. Feel the warmth on the outside, maybe the green light trapped in your palms. Stop for a moment here and feel your humanness. Let the eyes open, look at the front of your mat or your gourd and look up. Take your hands up. Fingertips to the sky. Sit bones way deep down into the earth. It might seem so simple a move, but the sense of the energetics moving through you as well, not just the physical body, but a grounding and a lifting, a feeling of the stability and the rise. Pull the low ribs in, look up at your hands, take your thumbs back behind you, see if you can feel the opening through your upper back. Put your head back between the elbows, take your hands, put them together, interlace the fingers, index fingers to the sky. We've got our steeple hands. Bubble squeeze the ears. See if you can feel the side body opening, little side winding movement, right? Waistline lengthening, the intercostal muscles between the ribs starting to get an awareness here. Bring it back to neutral and see if you can touch the sky. Yeah, a little bit longer. Beautiful. Inhale. On your exhale, press your hands together. Slowly lower them down through main central. We stop at the third eye. Tip of the nose. Lips. Throat. Onto your big heart. Thumbs. Press the heart. The heart rises. Inhale. Exhale. Spin your hands to the earth. We find our anchors. Hold the right hand a little bit more firmly. Inhale. And exhale. Left ear will soften in towards the left shoulder. Very slowly let it down. Reminding you weight of the head and gravity doing the work. Let's use the muscles as well here. Inhale. And on the exhale, an imaginary string pulls the right ear towards the sky. So the muscles on the right side of the neck will contract for a moment. Release that and see if you can get a little bit more side bend. Inhale your head back up to center. Exhale to the right. Softening in first. Finding where you might be holding. Maybe it's the spine. Maybe it's the musculature, the connective tissues. Inhale. Exhale, take the left ear up towards the sky. Left side of the neck will contract the upper traps. Release and see if you can soften in. Inhale the head back up to center and on the exhale, left hand turn with the chin on the horizon line. Explore the range, see where you can free up your resistance. Shake the head yes at the end of your range, a little bit of a nod. And bring it back to neutral and continue your rotation 
see how much more you can gain. Inhale back to the center, exhale around to the right. Chin on horizon line for safety. Take it around. Shake your head yes at the end. Give it a little clearing. Bring it back to neutral and look over the shoulder a little bit farther if possible. Beautiful, inhale back to the center. Exhale around to the left, chin on horizon. Same thing. Let's go a little deeper now if possible. Inhale on the exhale, right hand will hold the floor. The chin will move out towards her to the right shoulder point. Inhale it back through center, exhale around to the right. A little cleaner the second round. Inhale, exhale, chin out towards or to right shoulder point. Inhale back through center, slowly lower the chin towards the jugular notch. Between the two collarbones, a little shelf for it to fit right into. All the movements happening from the neck, the seven vertebrae in your neck. Let's trace it now on the collarbone. Inhale and on the exhale, trace the chin around to the right on that collarbone. If the chin starts to leave, that's where you stop. Otherwise, explore the end where it goes into the shoulder blade. Beautiful, swing it back forward, inhale, and exhale around to the left. Keeping it tucked, find that end of your range. Beautiful, yogis back to center. Inhale, and on the exhale, reaffirm the press of the fingertips and the sit bones, pull the low ribs and the heart will rise. Crown of the head reaches up to the sky. Slowly push the heart forward. There's an imaginary hand behind the heart, starting to find that arc of movement from behind the heart all the way up to the skull. We slowly let the head release back. No dizziness, no pain in the spine allowed. Find that beautiful extension through the neck, and the stretch in the anterior neck. Beautiful, inhale back to center and exhale. Take your L hands, thumbs go on tops of the thighs. We're used to this by now. Grounding, finding stability for mobility. Press down onto the thighs and maybe take the thumbs and internally spiral. Anytime we forward bend, we want that internal rotation. Keep the chin tucked, the low ribs engaged and start to lower the heart towards the ground. You're using your muscles here to prevent you from just decelerating right down. Take it down real slowly. And then let's add the arms to it now. Elbows at the side, the palms are up. Inhale, and on the exhale, root your hands to the earth. So we find index fingers forward, thumbs towards each other. Roll that imaginary marble, index to thumb. We know this cue, fingertips press the earth. We find this puckering of the palms. The wrist crease stays where it is. Roll the elbow creases towards the sky. You'll feel your shoulder blades adhere onto your ribs and see if maybe you can let your elbows release to the ground or to a prop. We'll use this press to the earth now with our hands to lengthen our spines. Inhale, exhale, press the hands and elbows into the earth and bring the crown of the head to the top of your mat. You have millimeters of length here, guys. Go ahead and see if you can find some of that range. I told you today we're gonna work our spines a whole bunch. Let's see if we can come out of this a half inch taller. Inhale, and on your exhale, let the crown of your head release to the earth and find that traction action all the way down to the sacrum. Inhale the head back up, and on the exhale, walk your hands back up to your tall sit position. Wonderful, switch the legs, uncommon cross, left on top if you started with right. Press your hands to your knees, pull the low ribs in and bring your heart real tall. Start in the tallest position you've got. Low back arched, awareness of ribs, heart real tall. Fly the arms up for our cactus arms, inhale. And on the exhale, take the thumbs backwards and drop them back, external rotation in our ball and socket in the shoulder. We inhale forward, big wide palms and take them down, internal rotation. Drop the laundry over the line. Inhale back up, exhale, take them back. Find this separate movement of ball and socket. Try not to drag the shoulder blades along with it. Beautiful, and take them back down again, internal rotation. Inhale them up, 
Exhale, fly machine arms, they come forward, palms touch and elbows touch, turn the palms to face you, inhale. Exhale, push the sides of the hands and elbows together and we scoop them up. See if you can keep the elbows together as long as possible, maybe up to the third eye. When they start to come apart, pause for a moment and then pull them apart, inhaling. And exhale, draw them down, elbows into side pockets. Such a wonderful reset. We'll do three of them. Push the sides of the hands and elbows together, scoop it up. Elbows come apart and they draw down. Maybe some snap crackles and pops in your shoulders. Take them back up again, inhaling and exhaling round the bend, elbows into side pockets. Light bulb, turn your palms up and down, pronating, supinating our forearms into our queen wave and then up overhead for your hallelujah arms. Back down through the queen wave to light bulb hands Go ahead and shake out the hands. See if you can get rid of some of that junk that's stuck in your forearms. Good, let's fly them up. Take your shoulders up to your ears. That's upper trapezius. That's the most overused muscle in your shoulder. Let it release. Find the stability here from your rotator cuff and deltoids, holding the shoulders stable rather than the blades coming up. Grab your imaginary tennis balls, yogis, flap your pterodactyl wings, pump the blood and energy through you. Let's take flight, hit the ground, come back up. How loose the wrists are, feeling the energy moving through you. We know what's coming next. Pterodactyls turn into eagles. Take the right on top, left on bottom. Modify or customize as need be. If you can't cross them, just have them next to each other and see if maybe you can get the fingers of your left into the palm of the right. Tricep flush parallel to the floor. Another reminder here, tricep or upper traps down. So shoulders are not by the ears, they're down. Inhale. Exhale, drive the right elbow into the left and bring those blades forward. See if you can find the opening through that upper back, spreading the wing. Inhale back to center and on the exhale, pinch the pencil between the shoulder blades, retract the shoulder blades and feel that mobilization mid thoracic spine. Inhale it back to neutral and on the exhale, make a right hand turn with the elbows first. Let's really stretch out the back of the left shoulder and mobilize the right. Add the head to it now, look over that right shoulder, see how free the neck has become. Inhale back through center. Exhale left with the elbows, just the arms first. See if you can find that movement. Nice, and look over the left shoulder now. Inhale back to center. On the exhale, drop the elbows, just the elbows first. The blades will start to ride up the back. A lower trap gets a stretch. Start to round the back now. Go into your tuck, chin. Round the head towards the earth, feel that beautiful unbridling of the shoulder blades. Inhale back up. On the exhale, pull the low ribs in and then take the elbows tall. Just the elbows first. And then I think the best part of this whole sequence, inhale, exhale, imaginary hand behind the heart. Push the elbows up first. See if you can find that derounding and then find that same arcing movement we did before when we let our head back, right from the center of the back, behind the heart, to the crown of the head. Beautiful, inhale back to center. On the exhale, release those eagle arms down and take them up opposite, left on top, right on bottom, and back through the same sequence we go, inhale. Exhale, push left into right, draw the blades forward. Inhale back to center. On the exhale, pull the blades back, retract. Inhale back to center. On the exhale, right hand turn with the arms. Big stretch, back left. Look over the right shoulder. Continue the rotation through our cervical spine. So getting all these movements, inhale back through center in our spines. Take it to the left, arms. And then let go over the left shoulder. Bring it back to center on the inhale. On the exhale, drop the elbows down. 
Elbows go towards the ribs. Start to round the back very slowly. Release the crown of the head towards the earth. Inhale back up. Exhale, pull the low ribs in, take the elbows up from behind the heart. And find that sweeping, beautiful arc movement. Uh, let the head release back. Inhale back to center and release the arms down. L hands, tops of the thighs. I'm not going to give you so much instruct on this side. Make your way into the pose. Best as you can remember what I've said or how you do it. Let's meet down on the ground. Arms will come out for rooting. Hands and elbows will press to find the length. See if you can distinguish the movement here of allowing the back to lengthen and the pelvis to anteriorly tilt, soften in, and then maybe let the crown of the head release towards the earth. Inhale back up. Exhale, walk your hands back, tall sit position. Okay, yogis, move your blankets. Let's open our legs. Really get into our spines now. Take the right foot back behind you. This is familiar to most of you. Press your heel back. I love doing some of the same poses. We can feel what it feels like today and maybe how far we've come in our progressions. Inhale, pull the body weight forward. You're on the tips of the right toes. Round the band onto the top of the right foot and find the plantar flexion in that ankle. So articulate through the toes the forefoot, the hind foot, right up into your leg. Let's roll back again, inhale, and on the exhale, roll back through it. Heel goes back all the way back. Draw the right one forward, take the left one back, same progression, heel pushes back, crown forward, back of the knee pushes to the sky. Inhale the body weight forward, tips of the left toes on to the top of the left foot. Feel all that movement through the bones of your Feet, inhale and exhale, push it back again and all the way back. Draw left knee forward, match left knee to right knee. Curl the toes under, inside ankle bones and toe knuckles touch. We'll slowly push back for our broken toe sequence. See if you can push your buttocks back. Feel the stretch in your calf muscle, the soleus especially. Slowly see if you can walk your hands back up by your knees. Allow the weight of the pelvis to sink down onto the feet. Modify or customize by put a block underneath the knees or something behind your buttocks. See if you can settle in, pull the low ribs in, bring the heart so tall. It'll create the arch in your neck. And take the middle fingers down towards the earth. Find that upana vayu, that grounding wind. Concurrently, the lifting wind, the Udana Vayu. Take your hands back behind you, interlace your fingers, thumbs around the medial arches, the inside arches of your feet, and spin your shoulders back. Find that external rotation. See if you can keep the palms pressed together. Inhale, and on the exhale, take them back behind you. Pinch the pencil between the shoulder blades. Find shoulder extension, elbow extension, and then drop the blades down and open that big heart. Take the arms back a little bit more if possible. Beautiful, release the middle fingers towards the earth again, kind of the head to the sky. Let's sail the arms up, helium arms, they're just gonna rise almost on their own. Interlace the fingers, turn the palms to the sky, little fingers and thumbs touch, little triangle shapes, elbows by ears, palms touch the roof, out through into the sky. Pull the low ribs in back, bend the upper back. Yeah, free up that spine. Release the arms back to the side. Take your hands forward onto the mat. Release the feet. Go ahead and kick them out. And let's reverse now. That was dorsiflexion. Let's release back now to plantar flexion. So one of the things we do in yoga often is work the opposite sides of the joints. So if you flex one time, extend the next. Here's the opposite, right? Take your right hand onto your knee and lift the shin, clear the fascia. 
You do the same thing on the left, clear the fascia. Take the hands back behind you. Let's get into the spine here again with extensions through the spine and the opening of the hip flexors. Keep the elbows nice and tight towards the back body. Open the heart. Inhale. And on your exhale, press your shins into the earth and lift your buttocks up off your heels and push the front of the pelvis skyward. So this is not coming from hyperextending through your low back. Don't do that. Pull the low ribs in. You got it and push the front of the pelvis forward, open your hip flexors. Deep inhale, and on the exhale, slowly land. Put your sit bones back down. They'll probably end up outside the heels. Pull the low ribs in and slowly start to decelerate your child to the earth. Use all the musculature in the front and back bodies to decelerate down. Perhaps your third eye will touch the earth or a prop, Pause for just a moment, inhale back up, pull the belly in, and on the exhale, shoulders come around over the hips, and the hands go back behind us. This time, let's rotate through the spine, inhale. Exhale, bend your right elbow, look over your right shoulder, and find the extension rotation. Inhale back through center, exhale opposite, bend the left elbow, look over the left shoulder. Inhale back through center and launch the child forward. Core strengthening, slowly allowing yourself to release. If this is way too far, put a bolster down and land on the bolster. Put your forehead down on the earth or a prop, pause for a moment. Inhale, pull the belly in, on the exhale. Shoulders round over, hands come back, quite familiar now, right? Let's go ahead and come onto the tops of the feet now, an extra added stretch Plant our flexion, keep the knees together if possible. Nice, put your shins back down again. Lean back a little bit more if possible and start to open the heart. So a modified camel here, the head is nice and free. Lean back a little bit more and maybe let your head release back. Inhale the head to neutral, tuck the chin. Launch the child forward last time, decelerate down, work your core. Forehead will graze the earth or a prop and inhale yourself back up again. Tall sit position. Come on to hands and knees. We'll move back maybe four or five times to full pose. Some of you are familiar with this one now. I love this in my own practice. Toes curled under, inhale. Exhale, just push back a little bit. Arch the back and spread the sit bones. You know what I mean by that? Spreading the sit bones creates the space in your back. Inhale forward, release the feet. And first round here, just bring your chest through a little bit for the shoulders and maybe release the pelvis towards the earth. Inhale back, curl the toes under. Same thing we just did, just go deeper into your hips this time. So the hip flexion angle goes deeper. Pause here for a moment. Inhale forward, release the feet. Start to uncoil the spine now. We find ourselves maybe the top of a cobra. So there's no rounding of our upper backs. The heart pushes through and the blades release. Inhale, curl the toes under. On the exhale, maybe push back the whole way now. Toes still curled under. Buttons go back, forehead releases to the earth or a prop, and then the elbows release or sphinx again. Press the hands and elbows into the earth and hold the spine long. Inhale back up again, release the feet. Let that cobra express itself now through the whole length to the spine. The neck is free. We're not looking up yet. Let's bend the elbows this time and put the pelvis down. Our hip flexors have gotten a little bit of a stretch in our back is starting to open. Inhale back through scared cat. And this time take the knees wide and push back for your wide child. So just varying the hip angles and slowly starting to uncoil the spine. Forehead rests on the earth or a prop and then shift the pelvis to the right and to the left. Caring for our body slowly and gently moving into practice. Beautiful. Bring it back to center. Inhale up through scared cat. Exhale, find your hanging cobra. 
Inhale, and on your exhale, look over your right shoulder, look back at the right heel. Inhale back through center, look over the left shoulder, left heel. Inhale back through center, look up. Inhale back to center, exhale, bend the elbows, put your pelvis down, look what we've done to our bodies already. Beautiful yogis, come on back up. Inhale, and on the exhale, move the knees a little closer, curl the toes under, and go into your rendition of your cat and cow. Slowly moving through each one of those points. Letting the head be the last thing to move. Reminding you there are 24 different segments that actually will articulate and move. Discover today maybe one that is neglected. Bring some awareness and energy. Let it dissolve for about 30 seconds into your favorite rendition of this, bending elbows, flexing hips, doing whatever feels right for you. Discover your sticky spots. Bring the awareness to it, like I said, and you'll be able to free up some of the resistance. Wonderful. Let's go into our mid thoracics now. Many of you guys know this one too. Turn your fingers in, bend your elbows to 45 degrees. Keep your low back arched and your neck arched. Try to move just thoracic spine, not your elbows. Inhale. On the exhale, drop your heart towards the ground. And that's by pinching the pencil between the blades again. Feel the movement mid thoracic behind the heart. Inhale, and on the exhale, take the mid back up towards the sky. Don't straighten the elbows, keep them bent, and try to find that movement between the blades. Back and forth a few times. Move through this with your awareness and direction of where we want the forces to be. Nice. Come on back to neutral. Let's thread the needle. Take your right hand forward on the mat. Your knees are hip distance apart, toes are curled under. Arch your back, spread your sit bones. Try not to move the pelvis. Inhale that left hand out to the left side and look up at your hand. It's easy to take the hand higher by shifting the pelvis. Please don't do that. Take the hand higher by strengthening the muscle. There we go. Hold it for a moment. Take a big inhale. And on the exhale, thread your needle. Take the left hand under. Put your shoulder down and the side of your head down. We're not pressing the head into the ground. We're just resting it. Check that the pelvis stayed in the ideal position as possible and slide that left hand through a little bit more. Turn the left palm up and down now several times. The shoulder's trapped under there now, so we articulate in the shoulder socket. Have the hand come to rest and slide it through perhaps just a little bit more. Inhale and on your exhale, walk your hand out to the top of your mat. Reach way out. When you think you've gone as far as you can, go a little bit more by pushing your sit bones back and finding the length to this whole right side body. Walk your hand around out to the left. Maybe you can get your elbow over by your ear and press your right palm into the ground and sit the sit bones back. Oh my goodness, quite a stretch. Pause for a moment here. Breathe into the left lung. Take the right hand back to the top of the mat, slide it down, it'll end up in front of the left elbow. Let's use that now to help in more rotation. Ribs up, we move, inhale. Exhale, push the right hand into the earth and the rib cage will rotate. Yeah. See if you can bring your right side of the rib cage up, left side down. Take the right hand if possible and put it on your sacrum now. So the sacrum, that holy bone, it, between the two pelvic bones. Press down into it and look, you can rotate a bit more. Maybe you'll take the right hand into the left hip crease. You got some more room and use that as your rotary assist. Don't press the left ear into the ground. It's just resting. Wherever the hand is, release, put it back down onto the floor and press up. Oh my goodness, so nice. And let's do the other side. Readjust, get your low back and your neck and it's nice arch. Left hand goes forward onto the mat. Inhale the right hand out to the side. Pause for a moment. 
take it higher from the strengthening, right? Rather than the shifting of the pelvis, take it way up there. Inhale, on your exhale, slide it through, goes under. Shoulder down, head down. Check the pelvis has stayed where it's supposed to. Slide the right hand through a little bit more and turn the right palm up and down a few times. See if you can find that articulation. Have it come to rest, slide it through, palm is up, and then walk lefty out. Yeah, walk way out. See if you can find the limits of the top of your mat and maybe a little bit more, and then start to cruise that left hand around to the right. Elbow goes by the ear, press the left hand into the earth and let the sit bones go back a little bit more. You'll stretch that long latissimus muscle from its origin to its insertion. Pause for a moment there, yeah. Inhale, the hand will slide back. It's gonna end up in front of the right elbow. Use it now to help in rotation. Inhale, exhale, push the left hand into the earth and rotate up. Maybe the left hand will go under the sacrum press and rotate. Maybe the left hand will go into the right hip crease. Use that as your rotary assist. Left hand comes off wherever it is, press down. Come on back up. Let's move into camel now. So most of us will have our toes underneath. Come back, see how we prep you, right? Come back into your broken toe to start with, see if you can find some peace there. Bring yourself up now onto your knees. If you feel unstable, you can definitely take your feet apart, see what's best for you. Put your hands on the front of your pelvis here and push your pelvis forward. Your buns will tighten a little bit, that's stability. Your glutes are extending your hips. Try to keep your hips in this position. Don't go into a big back arch if possible. Low ribs pulled in, we always have that awareness. Let's take our hands back behind us first. Interlace the fingers. Shoulders will roll back and do external rotation and extension. Open the heart, free up the neck, and then place your hands, the palms of your hands on the very top of your butt cheeks and small, small your back and pull your elbows in. Push your pelvis forward and keep it there. Start to lean back from the rib cage up. Start to open the heart. Don't let the head back yet and lean back enough that maybe you can get your hands onto your heels or some blocks. Keep the pelvis pushed forward, the shoulders open. And if it's in your abilities, let your head release back now for your rendition of channel. Inhale the head back forward, crunch and crackle. Release the feet, sit back, hands back, tops of the feet, release, and then push the pelvis forward Open up again. Wonderful. Release the buttons back to the heels. Okay. Open book and chalk trace with some additions. Let's start on our right side. So your shoulder, right shoulder is down, your right hip is down, your hips, knees, and ankles are 90 degrees. This is thoracic rotation in our spinal theme today. Have your head on the ground, you on a prop, palms start together. Inhale. On your exhale, very slowly, first round, slide your left hand up that right forearm onto the bicep, onto the heart, it stops there. Elbow releases up towards the heavens, inhale. On the exhale, glue your knees together, roll from the rib cage up. We've done a bunch of prep already. Maybe this open book feels even more open. If you can get your left tricep on the ground, hurrah. If not, put something underneath. Open up the left hand if your arm is close enough to the ground. Remember, we're not torquing the front of the left shoulder to get the hand down. It shouldn't look like that, but the shoulder stays down. Second round, we'll use our right arm to rotate a little bit more. Inhale, lefty up. Grab the cloud off the sky, imprint it onto the right palm and slide it forward to protract the blade. The heart goes to the earth. Inhale. Exhale, draw it through again. You can stop at the heart if you'd like to, or just make it a continuous movement and roll through it. 
Let's bend the right elbow now, fingertips to the sky. We'll press the elbow into the earth at the same time that we rise the heart and you'll find some more rotation. Inhale, exhale, push the right elbow down, lift the heart, oh yeah, rotate through it, do it one more time. Inhale, exhale, push the elbow down, raise the heart, and then unfurl your arms, your flags, turn your gaze towards the left hand, and really pause for a moment here. How about this today? Take your right hand onto the left rib cage, and just explore where the tightness might be Pretend it's me or somebody that you've practiced with, a teacher that comes around and we put our hands on to show you those lines of intention. Beautiful. Open it again. Feel that freedom. Inhale the left hand up, grab the cloud off the sky, imprint it onto the palm, slide it through. Now let's move into our chalk trace now. Keep the thumb and index on the ground of the left hand. Inhale and on the exhale, watch it with your eyes as it comes up over your head. If your shoulder is able to come through that full range, go ahead and come all the way around. If your hand leaves the earth, then that's where you stop, keeping your shoulders safe. Pause wherever it is open for you. Let's come back again to start position. Inhale, under exhale, take it up above head. Follow it around. Fingers come together. And one more time, inhale. Exhale, look what happens on the second round. Often you can round the bend or come further through it. It's not a competition, just an observation. Pause there for a moment. Inhale, exhale, trace it back around come through the full arc. Beautiful. We're going to switch to the other side, but we're going to do it using our core. So stay right where you are. Inhale. Exhale, draw the left hand up the forearm. Have it come to rest on the heart. Inhale again. On the exhale, pull your low belly and use your abdominal obliques to lift the legs up. They're going to come through. Left arm will release to the ground, release the arms and legs, and you end up on your left side. Use your props as necessary again. Let's go through this. Inhale, exhale, trace the hand, right hand up the left forearm, this time onto the heart, elbow to the sky, and over you go from the movement of your rib cage. See if maybe you can get your tricep close to the earth or slide a prop underneath, unfurl the arm. Remind you again, it's not about getting the arm down, it's about rotating through the rib cage. Inhale yourself back up, hand to the sky, cloud, imprint left palm, slide it through, protract the blade, heart goes to the earth. Inhale back through it again, make it smooth, roll through it. Let's use the left elbow this time to rotate. Left elbow on the ground, fingertips to the sky. Inhale, exhale, push lefty down. Oh, rotate through the heart. One more time, inhale, exhale, push the elbow down and lift. Unfurl the arm, see if you can find that beautiful open book. Inhale the right hand back up, let it grab the cloud off the sky, imprint palm to palm, slide it through. Bring it back to neutral. Inhale, exhale, chalk trace up overhead. Follow your hand with your eyes. Trace it up overhead. If it stays on the ground, glorious. If not, stop and pause. Inhale back through the range of motion, all the way up over through the arcing movement. And last time, inhale, exhale, draw it back up. Take it around. Pause for a breath or two. Look what we can do to our bodies, right? So sweet, inhale, exhale, bring it back around again. Come to rest. Roll onto your backs. Draw your knees to your chest. Take your forearms around your shins. Maybe grab your left wrist with your right hand. Notice here as you bring your knees to your chest, your low back rolls off the earth. Provided you do not have an active disc problem, let it roll. It's okay to flex the spine sometimes. 
And what I'd like to do is just remind you of how we imprint our sacrums to keep our low back safe. So press the back of the skull into the earth and tuck the chin, find that. And then slide your hands onto your knees and release your sacrum onto the earth. Notice as your sacrum imprints, you can slide your left hand or your right hand underneath your back as a little bit of a space. That's what we want. Circle your hips out to in. So as you're doing this, we have a sacral imprint. So you're not just rolling the whole thing around, but the sacrum stays imprinted. So the pelvis stays stable and we just articulate the hips. Easy for me to say. Do the other way now in the out rolling through those hips. Let's do our back decompression. Hands are on the tops of the knees, not the kneecaps, but on the patellar tendons below. Imprint your sacrum. Inhale, exhale. Push the knees up into the hands, but pull the hands down into the knees and notice how the sacrum gets even more imprinted and the low back arches off the ground. You're not pressing your head, beautiful. Release that, inhale. Exhale, repete, one more time, knees towards hands, hands towards knees, press the sacrum down. And release, knees together, feet apart, crazy legs, arms open in a T. Inhale, exhale, slide the right knee down the inside of the left shin. Keep it in contact with the shin, the left leg's not just gonna drop open, but we strengthen our muscles this way, slide righty back up lefty and then lefty down righty as they go over to the right. Inhale back up, the knees to the sky, and then on the exhale, right will slide down the inside of left. Truly one of the most amazing poses, this crazy leg sequence. Keep the legs moving, let's add the arms, thumbs go into elbow creases. Inhale up to center on the exhale, right legs go to the right, arms go to the left. We've prepped a lot of rotation already, hopefully you can feel the benefits. Continue on with this, legs going one way, arms going the other. Always marrying the breath with the movement, inhale into the top and then exhaling as they lower to the opposite side. Add the head this time. Inhale to center, legs go right, head goes right, arms go left. Wind it up, inhale and wind it back the opposite way on the exhale. Head to knees, elbows opposite. Add the eyeballs now, eyeballs and elbows one direction, head and knees the opposite. You can have your eyes open or closed. on back to center. I'm asked often to please do this psoas block sequence. So here we are doing our psoas block sequence. Take your block, lowest level, bridge up, put the pelvis down. It's the sacrum that's on the block. We know this. Remember, if the block is comfortable, keep readjusting. Inhale. And on the exhale, straighten out the right leg, slide it down the mat. Sorry, Lena. <laughs> slide it down the mat, Tadasana leg. Big open hip. Let's paint that right leg down today. So take your right hand on the top of the right hip and just paint it down. So from the waistline down over the front of your pelvis. Good, let it release and then the right leg will drop off to the right side. Do the same with your left, now slide it down. Have a Tadasana first, paint down. So if the shorts are kind of bunched up now, that's what your fascia is doing as well. See if you can find the fabric in your shorts lengthening as well as your fascia. Let that left leg turn out now. Readjust the block, find the opening. So the low back is hanging off the back of the block in extension while the front of the pelvis opens. Take the hands into those bikini bones, top of the pelvis and Fit your fingers inside and pull them apart a little bit. Feel the opening in the front of the pelvis and the gathering of the sacroiliac joints in the back. Let's trigger point our psoas muscles. So take your four fingers, not the thumb, 
two inches outside of your belly button, each side of the belly, and start to dig in and walk your hands up the lazy river here towards the bottom of the rib cage. They'll hook into the bottom of the rib cage and work your fingers around the bottom of the cage to release your diaphragm. Yep, it'll come to the very outside where your mushy waist is and bring them back in again to the center, two inches away from the belly button, walk them down past the belly button, through the bowl of the pelvis, onto the top of the thigh. That's where your hip flexor attaches. Take your arms up over your head, a big sweeping movement. We love this position for finding our breath, right? Maybe take the right hand around the left wrist and lengthen. Left hand around right wrist and lengthen. Close your eyes for a moment here and feel the power of your breath. As you inhale, fill up those lungs, fill up the size of the rib cage. Hold the breath for a second at the end of the inhale. Let the lungs recoil and then use your abdominals to push out the rest of the breath. Release your hands to your sides. Bend your knees, put your feet on the earth. Let's start to open the hips and the hamstrings. Take the hands around the front of the right knee, draw the knee to the chest. Go ahead and flex the low back again. See what happens there, flexing or rounding it, right? Keep the knee awareness here and then push the sacrum down. So look what happens. Your knee will leave or come away from your chest a little bit. That's fine. I'd rather your sacrum be printed or imprinted and your back be in a nice arch. Circle your ankle now, your right ankle, clockwise, counterclockwise. Developing the strength of the muscles to hold this in position. Spread the toes of the right foot. Release that. Slide your hands behind your knee now and draw it up towards your chest. So it will come up a bit farther, but don't let the sacrum leave again. So don't round the back. Draw it up. Let's open the hammies now. Inhale. On your exhale, straighten out your right leg. So what does that mean? You're going to lose some of the hip flexion. Let's straighten out the leg and pull the toes to the face. Maybe your hands will slide down the leg a little bit. Oh my goodness, feel all that opening and awareness back of your right leg. Let's do that a few times. Draw it back in on the inhale, find the flexion without rolling the back, flexion of the hip. Inhale, exhale, straighten it out again. Pull the toes to the face. Last time, draw it in on the inhale. And on the exhale, straighten it out. Draw it in again. This time slide the whole right leg over to the right side a bit, a lateral glide, so the right thigh doesn't get caught on the rib cage. Take the sole of the right foot and stand it on the sky now. So ideal world, 90 degrees, hip, knee, and deflection in, or I'm sorry, ankle and knee, and deflection in your hip. See if you can take your right hand on the outside of that right foot. If the foot's too far away, Throw a strap over the bottom or just have your hands behind the right knee. Here's the stretch now, Yogi. Straighten out your left leg. Slide it down the mat. The heel needs to stay on the earth. Oh my goodness, the opening of that left hip flexor. We prepped you in camel and in some of the other beginning poses. Maybe you can feel the work that you've already done. If your left heel is off the earth, you need to slide a prop underneath. Don't hover. Take the left arm up overhead now. Complete that stretch, left side body. Sole of the foot stays towards the heavens. Draw the knee a little closer towards the armpit. Try not to press the back of your skull to the earth. Beautiful, left hand releases, left foot onto the earth. Release the right leg down. We best do the other side, readjust the block as necessary. Hands go in front of the left knee, draw it back up. So let the back round and then imprint the sacrum. Beautiful, find the arch in the back. Circle your ankle clockwise, counterclockwise. Have it come to rest and spread your toes. Switch your hands to the back of your knee. Now draw the knee up. Remember, imprint the sacrum. So find the stretch of your hamstring. Inhale. Exhale, let the knee straighten out. Maybe your hands will slide down the thigh a little bit. Remember to pull your toes to your face to complete that posterior line stretch. 
Do it a few times, yogis. Inhale the leg back in again. Deep hip flexion, sacrum and prints. Inhale, exhale, straighten it out again. Inhale it back in. Exhale, tighten it. Last time, inhale, exhale, straighten it out. Draw it back in. Glide it to the left a little bit. Deep flexion angle. Take the sole of the left foot so your hip, I'm sorry, your knee and your ankle are at 90. Left hand outside of that foot or behind the leg or a strap. Imprint the sacrum and straighten the right leg. As the right leg straightens out, the sole of the left foot stays skyward. Take two or three breaths here and see if you can deepen left hip flexion and right hip extension. Maybe take the right arm up over your head in your second breath. Pause there. Bring the right hand back, slide the right leg, sole of the foot. Oh, yummy, left foot goes down. Readjust the blocks. Let's take our legs up for our candlestick legs. I like the hands at the bottom of the block. I call it bridge chest. If you can maybe interlace your fingers on the bottom of the block, or at least hold the bottom of the block, and then bring your shoulder blades underneath you. Press your sacrum into the block and then straighten out your legs for your candlestick legs. Ideal world, straight up to the sky. Be sure the block is comfy cozy. Let's open the gates, inhale. On the exhale, pull your belly down, imprint the sacrum, and let the legs open in a V. Cracking and snapping on this one often. Hips are unbridled here, go ahead and take them out. Look at your toes, maybe the right foot first, turn them out, left foot, turn them out. Inhale them back together. Big toe, knuckles, and ankles touch. Exhale, let them out again. That's a lot of core strengthening, adductor stretching, abductor strengthening. Back up again, they go. Inhale and exhale. Last time, look at how the gates open. Inhale and back up. Bona Konasana legs. Exhale, soles of the feet push together. Lower the heels down into the groin. Inhale, exhale, push the soles of the feet together, rise up the redwood tree out of the forest, toes to face. Do that two more times, heels drop down. Feet push together, we rise. Heels drop down, push together, we rise. Bend your right leg, put it on the earth, bend your left leg, put it on the earth. Bridge up off the block, slide the block out from underneath. Put your pelvis down, put your sacrum down, imprint the sacrum soles of the feet together, Bona Konasana legs, and go ahead and rock side to side. Beautiful. Pinwheel legs. Bring them back to neutral. Take your hands to the outsides of your legs, move your legs back together, roll over onto your right side. And let's come into kneeling position. Take your right foot forward on the mat, left leg goes back. So in the same theme here of opening our hip flexors and our spines, the right foot is forward of the knee slightly, the left leg will be your anchor. Take your hands onto your pelvis, let's be sure the pelvis stays in the right position. So left hip isn't skewed, but they're both facing forward. Inhale. On the exhale, push the top of the left foot into the earth and feel the stretch down the front of the left hip flexor as the right knee starts to go over the right ankle. Hands are on the pelvis. We've got a slightly anteriorly tilted pelvis. Push down on your pelvis and grow your spine real long. See if you can find a little bit of back bend here. We did camels, we did lots of this, open up. Inhale again and on the exhale, Take that right knee forward just a little bit more. Bring your gaze back to neutral. Nice set. Inhale the left hand up. Exhale, take it back behind you. Open up. If your balance is there, go ahead and look up at your hand and look at the thumb go back behind you. Big stretch the whole front of the left side of your body. Inhale. Exhale, left hand comes back to the hip and come onto your knee point. 
pull up your egg, pull in your belly. We're going to switch our legs without a lot of wobbling. Hopefully, take righty back and take lefty forward. Foot is in front of knee. Top of the right foot on the earth. Inhale. Exhale. Push that right foot down. Start to open the front of the right hip. We come into a little bit more knee flexion as the hip opens. It's not from a huge low back arch. That's all contained. It's from the opening of the front of the pelvis. Use your hands to help to level off the pelvis. Come a little deeper if possible. Inhale the right arm up. Exhale, take it back behind you. So if you can open from that mid thoracic spine again, if the balance is there, look up at your hand and take it back. Inhale, exhale, hand to the hip, come back onto the right knee point. We're gonna switch back and forth several times. Pull in your core, use the core for stability to switch your legs back. Second round, start off exactly the same. Inhale, exhale, top of the foot presses. We open the front of the left hip. Maybe you can feel, yeah, that's open now. Blow ribs in, big open heart. Take the left hand up just as we did. On the inhale and on the exhale, take it back behind you a little bit. And this time, see if you can take it over to the right side so we open up into a side bend as well. If this is uncomfortable on your left knee, come out of it and put a blanket down. Inhale back to center and on the exhale, take it back maybe a little bit farther. Yeah, now we're opening, right? Beautiful. Inhale back to center and on the exhale, reach out. So deepen the flexion in the right hip as you lengthen the spine. It's not rounding, but lengthening. Take the left elbow on the outside of the right knee and put your palms together. See if you might be able to put your thumbs onto your heart, not your armpit, to find the rotation here. Again, we've prepped a lot of this. See if you can get your right elbow to the sky, your left elbow towards the earth. Got to find your balance. Press the left foot down, right foot down, and Scissor the legs together. Beautiful. Bring it back around. Come back to your tall position. Find your stability. Switch your legs. Opposite side. Top of the right foot presses. Left foot forward a bit. Open up the hip flexors. We've done a bunch. Nice. Pull the low ribs in. Find that opening. Use your hands to find level pelvis. Inhale the right arm up. Exhale, take it back behind you. Inhale again, and on the exhale, take it to the left. This time, open the right side body. Keep your stability. Inhale back to center. Exhale, take it back a little bit farther. Yeah, that whole upper back is open now. Inhale, exhale, reach out. Flex the left hip and reach way out in front of you. Take the right elbow outside of that left knee. Put your palms together. Put your thumbs under your heart and find the rotation. The left elbow will go up. The right elbow might go down. Find that rotation. Inhale back through center. Hands onto the pelvis. Knees come together again. Sit back. See what Varasana feels like now. Take your hands back behind you. Take your thighs or shins off the ground. Shins go back down. Open the fronts of the hips. So back into that hip flexion. Okay, sitting pretty onto your right hip. Becoming familiar to many of you now. Right foot, left thigh. Left foot can be turned out or straight back behind you. Take your fists to the earth, lift and shake them out. You might need your blanket for this. Many people will be sitting with their left hip way up off the ground because they're tied in internal rotation. Take your blanket, slide it under your right butt cheek to level off your pelvis. Inhale. On your exhale, your headlights stay forward. Just take your left hip up, push it towards the top of your mat. More hip unwinding. Release it to the ground. Now, first round, use your L hand and internally spiral that left hip. Sit bone toward the earth. Second round, push it forward. Take the middle finger, left hand, squash it down. Third round, take it forward. And just in your mind's eye now, 
Release the hip into internal spiral. Left hip is internally rotating, right hip is externally rotating. Find that beautiful articulation in your hips. We'll move into seated twist now. So lean back, inhale. Exhale, pull your whole belly and core in and see if you can take your left leg and gracefully sweep it around the right. Take your fist to the earth, lift up, shake it out. Both sit bones down on the ground or slide a blanket underneath, hands under or on the knee, pull the low ribs in, big open heart. First round of twist is muscular twist, inhale. On the exhale, open twist to the right, keep your nose over your knee. Look for the wrinkles in your shirt as you come around, that's the twist. And then free up the head at the last minute, look over the middle or the little finger of your right hand. Inhale it all back to center, nose over knee. Keep the nose over the knee and twist to the left, your closed twist. When you've twisted around as far as you can go, turn your gaze. Inhale back to center and on the exhale, open twist again. Turn the gaze and free up the arms this time. Use the push of the left elbow to pull the right hand to open the spine, lengthen it out and find the twist. Pause for a moment in your twist here and look over your right shoulder a little bit more. You've got it, I know you do. Inhale back through center with the arms. Keep the nose over the knee first. Make your twist through your muscles. Turn the gaze now. Release the arms. Right elbow will press left knee. Left hand will pull back and we pull out of it. Long, elegant spines. Extension twist. Inhale back to center. Beautiful. Pause for a moment here. Let's take our hand to our knee and come forward with it. So a little forward bend and a seated twist movement. See if maybe you can touch your nose or your chin to your left knee, a piriformis stretch. Wonderful. Come on back up to seat. Take your left leg, put it back where we found it. Maybe you can feel the work you've done already, a little bit easier to sit. Let's move into our twist now. Remember, ribs up, inhale. On your exhale, twist to the right. Turn that rib cage, so much prep. Nice, yogis, put your arms down on the mat. Now your right arm is forward of your left for staggered sphinx arms. The left elbow is on the front of the right knee. Inhale, on the exhale, push the hands and elbows into the earth and push that left elbow into the right knee. Find the length, right, the periscoping, as well as a little bit of twist to address your heart towards the earth. Take the left hand forward now, sphinx arms, press hands and elbows down, lengthen out your spine. If your underneath hip is pinchy, slide the right knee forward a little bit and should get rid of the pinch. I want you to all discover a millimeter of length to your spine. And then go ahead and make your pillow arms, put your forehead down on your pillow arms. Straighten out your right leg now. Hip flexion, we've done it. Take the left foot and walk it back behind you. Your hip is open now, see if you can explore that end range. While the left hip is open, see if you can spin your heart towards the ground and find the rotation to perhaps allow your forehead to release to the earth. Pause for a moment there in your stretched out beast. Draw your left leg back up, slide your hands up, and let's move into gate pose. Reset. Foot to thigh, thigh to foot, big tall body. Take your right hand out, put your left elbow down, or sorry, your right elbow down. Left thumb into your armpit, inhale, exhale, lengthen out. So before we do anything, find the length. We're using our thumb to Elongate the spine and then use the thumb to roll the heart towards the sky, rotate through, look up, inhale the left hand up and on the exhale with a strong right arm platform, take the left hand up and reach way out. Let the right ear release towards the right shoulder, mm, softening in. We'll switch to the other side as a little bit of a push with the right hand more of your core. Inhale up. Remember our Saramante arms here. Take them over the car dealership. Let the left elbow land somewhere, maybe on the earth, maybe on your shin, maybe on your hip. 
Use that as your strong arm again. Lengthen out with the right hand and roll your heart to the sky. Switch again. Up they go. Switch over right side. Woo, lengthen out. Look at that. Nice. And back to the other side, your rusty gate. Mm. Back to center. Lean back. Let's switch our legs opposite side. Left foot, right thigh, right foot behind, or turn out. Use your fist, press into the earth, shake out the pelvis. If your right hip is way up, slide a blanket underneath your left. Inhale. On the exhale, push the right hip forward, open those hip flexors even more. On the way down, use that L hand and internally glide that ball into the socket. Inhale it back up again. Exhale, release down, middle finger, right sit bone. See if you can find the ground. Inhale back up. Exhale, release in your mind's eye that rotation. Press the fists to the earth again, find the lift. Make it so elegant to switch your right leg over your left. Lean back, take righty over lefty. Fist to the earth, shake it out, put the pelvis down. Hands on the knee, big open heart. Lie the arms up, inhale. Exhale, nose over knee, make a left hand turn with the ribs first. Look over to the left little finger. Inhale back to center, keep nose over knee, exhale to the right. Look over little finger, right hand. Inhale back to center, exhale left. Turn the gaze, release the arms, use the arms to help to find a little bit more rotation. Always the muscles first and then the arms to help, bring it back to center. Inhale, exhale, nose over knee first. Turn the gaze, release the arms, use those arms to help to inspire. Inhale back to center, pause for a moment. Hand on the knee, big open heart. Let's lean forward. So we don't lean by rounding, but by deepening the hip crease. Try to put your nose or your chin under your knee. Inhale it back up, tall position. Take righty back where we found it. Left foot on right thigh. Turn from your rib cage to the left. Put your elbows down for your staggered sphinx arms. Right elbow touches left knee. Inhale, exhale, press the hands and elbows into the earth. Find that length. Look at the length of your spine, beautiful yogis. A little rotation now, so the heart goes towards the ground a bit more while your sacroiliac stays sick. Take the right arm forward for sphinx arms. Inhale, exhale, press hands and elbows into the earth. Lengthen out the spine. So you can keep all the curves intact as you make your pillow arms. Put your forehead down. Inhale, and on your exhale, straighten out your right leg now. Push it down to the bottom of the mat. Push it all the way down and take it back behind you. So you're opening up the front of those hip flexors again. Slide it back, and as you slide it back, try to rotate your heart towards the ground a little bit more. Maybe you'll lay it down. Maybe put your forehead down on the earth in your chest. See where it is for you, reviving you again. If your underneath leg is pinchy, take the knee forward a little bit, should decrease the pinch. Take a breath or two here at the end of your range. Gather the right leg back up again, press yourself back up. Let's get ready for gate pose. Take the left hand out. Take the right hand this time onto the top of the thigh first and internally rotate it. See if you can find that. Yeah. Drop the left elbow down onto the ground. Take the right thumb into that armpit. Lengthen your spines. Rotate the spine. Look up. Inhale the right hand up. And exhale, take it across. Reach way out your fingertips so as far away from that right hip as possible. Let the left ear move towards the left shoulder, maybe. Inhale up, Saramante arms, take them over to the opposite side. Elbow will land on something. See if you can find something to purchase. 
Rather than rounding forward, we open and find the rotation. Mm. Inhale it back up again and exhale, reverse back for your gait. Reach way out. Inhale back up and exhale, switch opposite side. And come on back to center. Take your right leg over your left for your half lotus again. See what half lotus feels like. After practice, maybe a little bit easier to get into it. I'd like to add log stack legs today or our double pigeon. So perhaps this is already enough for you. Celebrate that. If you want to try to open up a little bit more and it feels right for you, go ahead and take your underneath leg out to 90-90 if possible at your hip and your ankle, and then take your ankle bone, your right ankle bone, on top of your left knee. Some of you will start off with your leg like this and maybe even up like this. Take a blanket underneath your sit bones to open that. Maybe you'll have a block ready for you too to take open or take the, the gap between. Keep the toes of the right foot pulled back towards the knee. Roll onto your sit bones and then convince yourself if it's in your abilities here to soften that right hip and let the right knee start to descend down towards the ankle. It's a lot of beautiful stretch and opening in your hips. Don't overdo it, don't underdo it. If there's a big gap, slide something in there. See if you can open your hearts here. Lots of sensation in your hips, guaranteed. If you still have some room, take your hands behind you. Start to arch your low back and flex your hips. Bring the crown of the head towards the top of the mat, tuck the chin and find the softness in that right hip especially. Maybe you can walk your hands out in front, reach out, use the pull of the fingertips to lengthen. And for those of you who have still not had enough, take your left hand outside of that right foot, right hand on the inside. We find rotation through the ribs and then I lengthen out and try to touch my chin towards the big toe. Soften into it. So much sensation going on, right hip, rib cage. Press back up, come back through center. Maybe you can deepen the center a little bit. Walk the hands back up again to tall sit position. Come back into half lotus before you switch. Look at how that softens our half lotus. Switch your legs opposite side, left on top, right on top, whichever one you didn't start with. Do your log stack legs. So the right one underneath, the ankle and the knee is at 90. See if you can take the left ankle and put it on the right knee, the top of the right knee. You'll start off with a big gap here. Take up the gap with whatever's right for you. Hands to the ground, maybe lift the pelvis, keep the arch and the low back. Anterior tilt of the pelvis, sit on a blanket if necessary. See if you can bring those legs a little bit closer together by convincing the muscles to soften. Take the hands back behind you to start. Keep the big open heart, chin stays tucked, and come forward. Accentuate that stretch. If you keep the toes of the left foot pulled to the knee, you won't hurt your knee. Maybe you can take your hands out in front, reach out. We're not rounding, we're not trying to come down low, we're just sinking into this, trying to find softness, especially in the left hip now. If you'd like to add the last component, take your hands outside of the right knee. We tuck the chin and lead with the crown of the head and try to bring yourself down and again, convince your left hip to soften Walk your hands back through center. Maybe you can deepen it a tiny bit. Walk your hands back up, tall position. And slide the left leg back into your half lotus. Well done. Okay, Yogi, so let's find ourselves on our backs. Stretch out your legs down the mat. Take your arms to the top of the mat. Lay out that beautiful body. Definitely can feel some work in my hips and my spine. 
A few inhales and exhales here, filling up the whole circumference of the rib cage with those balloons, those lungs of yours. Noticing the hold at the end of the inhale. And then exhaling, recalling the lungs and using your abdominals to push out the rest of the sludge. Take another two rounds like that. Bring your arms to your sides. Grab your mat with your fists. Inhale, and on your exhale, push your hands towards your feet, and your body will slide up the mat an inch or so. Shoulder blades come underneath you. Your palms are tall towards the sky. Cover your eyes with an eye bag if it's handy, or just close your eyes, block out the visuals, cut down the distractions. Let yourself start to descend into your shavasana, your lucid sleep, your productive rest, the icing on the cake. How about taking the tip of the tongue and touching the roof of your mouth behind your teeth? That's a calming spot. Allows you to sink deep into your into your shavasana, the end of your practice. Let the tongue release now to the bottom of the mouth and the lips will part slightly. We have no tongue and no teeth. There's no gripping or grinding. It's a softness. That softness is relayed through the rest of the system. Take yourself to one of your favorite places. Maybe you're there already. Unburden yourself even further. Allow the breath to dissolve to its natural state. See if you can free up your physical form and surrender. And let yourself float out for a minute or two on your beautiful Shavasana cloud. Beautiful sound of silence. So much coming at us. Have a moment or two of no thoughts and no thinking. Feel the calmness rush over you, taking us down a notch or two to find our breath and our comfort. Find the marble on the back of your skull and let your head rock so slowly side to side. Begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes, bring your physical bodies back to our space. Practice them separately, but so bonded together. It's our new reality. For the time being, keeping the flame alive and finding this separate together practice. Bend your knees, slide your heels towards your buttocks, glue your knees and ankles together. Inhale and on your exhale, roll over so gently onto your right side away from your heart for 
transition position. Often beautiful thoughts flood through our brain as we roll to our side after practice. Thoughts of kindness, of generosity, of altruism, and seva, our selfless service. Finding compassion and empathy. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. What a beautiful idea. Inhale, and on your exhale, bring yourself back up to seated place. Fingertips to the ground, energetic finger prongs connecting you into the earth, feeling grounded and held and protected and loved and supported. Feeling the energy right through this planet of ours, to all of us practicing in our group and all the other yogis practicing around the world. Draw the energy up from the earth to your heart center, thumbs to the heart and heart will rise. We pause here reminding ourselves to be so grateful for all that we have. Inhale. On your exhale, let your hands float forward, fingertips touch, fingernails touch, hands open like a lotus. Draw that sweet nectar back into your heart center, backs of the hands roll, thumbs to heart. Take your thumbs to your third eye, still contemplation point, all seeing eye. It's an ESP eye, it's our clarity spot. Let's bow to each other, yogis. Namaste. Thank you all for sticking with it today again. Ike and I are doing the best we possibly can. We'll work out some of the bugs again. I want you to know I've got some offerings that are coming up. You'll get some emails this week and next week. Um, a beautiful practice and study uh, with Janet Stone. Uh, please keep your eyes out for it. I'm so proud of this adventure, this video that we have filmed. I hope you guys will be interested in purchasing it and learning more about your anatomy. I'm going to hang out. I'd love to see your faces for a bit. Thanks for joining me again here on this beautiful Sunday yoga. And if you'd like to practice during the week, Tuesdays and Thursdays on Yoga Tree uh, website, uh, 7.30 in the morning. Thank you, yogis. <laughs>